Hi, welcome to a statistics video on outliers. The effect of outliers on statistics. Okay, let's define an outlier. An outlier is any score that lies outside the usual distance away from the other scores. So uh, it's a score that's a fair bit of a uh, fair bit of distance away. To be classed as an outlier, a score must be a significant distance above the other scores or below the other scores. And uh, well, what we'll do is we'll define this phrase here, significant distance. There's a way of deciding whether an outlier is uh, is is really an outlier. A score is, is really an outlier. Let's have a look how we do that. An outlier is any score that is less than Q1 by at least 1.5 times the interquartile range or more than Q3 by at least 1.45 times the interquartile range. Sounds like a mouthful and I'm having trouble saying it, but let's have a look at uh, an, a good example and we'll be pretty clear on whether a score is an outlier or not. Okay, let's remind ourselves of interquartile range and those ideas of Q1 and Q3. Let's go through a quick example of uh, what an interquartile range is so that we can figure out uh, whether the scores are related to the outliers uh, in the right way there. So interquartile range is the upper quartile minus the lower quartile or Q3 minus Q1. There's a previous video on the interquartile range that you can watch if you need to. Let's have a look at an example that was on this other video. We've got the median of these uh, 10 scores here that's halfway between the 26's there and then we what we do to get Q1 we have a look at the median of the bottom half so if we take the median of these five scores we'll get that 24 there and we'll call that Q1 uh, that score represents uh, the 25 percent way between the start of those scores and the end of those scores so it's like the quarter point so we call that Q1 and in this case it's 24 the value of Q1 then if we find the median of the top half of the scores, median of those five, it would be that 28, and we'd call that Q3, or the three-quarter mark, kind of like that 28 is three-quarters of the way through those scores if they're all placed in order. So for interquartile range, we would be doing Q3 minus Q1, which is in this case our 28 minus the 24, and we get an interquartile range of 4. Now that's a measure of the spread of these scores. So we've got an interquartile range of 4. That's going to be helpful in our uh, calculations to see whether a particular score is an outlier or not. So let's move on from that. That's how we find out the interquartile range. And as I said, there's a video on that previously you can check out. Okay, so let's have a look at these scores. Now interquartile range we just said was 4. Now. We've got two scores here. Our lowest score is perhaps is, is 16 there, and our highest score is 38. They're just by looking at them a fair way from the other scores. 16 is a fair bit before the next score, uh, so it's a fair bit lower than the other scores. And 38 is a fair bit higher than the next score, that's uh, the second highest score, 29 there. But we need to figure out whether we could class 16 as an outlier or 38 as an outlier. So let's see if we can run through the uh, the ways of calculating that and see whether we can define those as outliers or not. So we said earlier that we want, want our, our reference distance is 1.5 lots of the interquartile range. Now if we have an interquartile range of 4, which we just showed you how we calculated, 1.5 or 1.5 lots of that, um, that interquartile range, 1.5 lots of 4 is 6. So we would class uh, any scores that are below Q1 by 6 or more as outliers and we would class any scores that are above Q3 by 6 or more as an outlier on the, on the high end there. Let's have a look. So an outlier is less than Q1 by at least 1.5 times the IQR. Now our 1.5 times our IQR we just said was 6. So if, um, let's have a look at that, just do the calculation there. Our Q1 was 24. So if we take that 6 away from that, we get a score of 18. So any scores of 18 or less, we can class uh, definitively as an outlier. So I think you can see that 16 is less than 18. So we'd say that 16 is an outlier. So we uh, carefully determined that 16 was definitely an outlier because it was lower than 1.5 lots of the IQR less than Q1.
bit a bit uh, complicated, but still. Now let's see if 38 is also an outlier. It's uh, to be an outlier on the high side. It's got to be more than Q3 by at least 1.5 lots of the IQR. Now the IQR reference amount there was 6. So if we'll add, take our Q3 of 28 and we'll add 6 to it and we get 34. Any any scores that are 34 or bigger uh, can be classed as an outlier. So yes, 38 is bigger than 34. So we'd say 38 is an outlier. So really by uh, running through, the, uh, finding the interquartile range, multiplying it by 1.5, then we can take that 6 off Q1 and get a, an indication of where the outliers are on the low side. And we can add the 6 to the Q3 and see how big a score has to be before we call it an outlier. So uh, basically we figured out here that any scores of 18 or less in this particular set of data, set of scores, 18 or less, and we can call that an outlier. And um, any scores 34 or bigger, we can call outliers. So that 16 there and that 38 were outliers uh, as defined by the rules there. Okay, a bit complicated, but still once we get the hang of that. So an outlier, just to recap, is any score that's less than Q1 by at least 1.5 lots of the IQR. Or uh, on the high side, an outlier is any score that's more than Q3 by at least 1.5 lots of the IQR. So to figure all that out, we've got to find the interquartile range properly, multiply by 1.5, and take that off the Q1 and add it to the Q3. And there are our numbers that tell us whether a particular score is an outlier or not. Okay, covered a lot of ground there. Hope that helps, and we'll catch you next time. So. Uh, well, just before we leave this video, we'll just check the effect of outliers. Now, an outlier, one particularly big or one particularly small score, doesn't affect all of the statistical measures that we use. And uh, the measures of location that we're talking about here and thinking about the effect of, measures of location are mean, median and mode. So let's have a think about whether an, an outlier would affect all of those in the same sort of way. A mean, the mean of a set of scores is most affected by an outlier because every value is used when we calculate the mean. So a really big score will increase the mean of quite a fair bit, or a really small score will reduce the mean by quite a fair bit. So an outlier does affect the mean quite a lot. The median can be affected by an outlier, but only in a really minor way. The addition of a really big score or the addition of a really small score to a set of data uh, just bumps the median across one a little bit, but uh, doesn't really have much of an effect on it. And uh, the mode is not affected by an outlier in any way. One really small score is, out, is unlikely to be uh, the mode of a set of scores. And one really small score is unlikely to be the mode. So the mode is uh, almost always going to just stay what it was before, even when we add a really large or a really small score. So it's interesting. We've got the three um, measures of location, mean, median, and mode, and they're each of them are affected in different ways by the addition of an outlier to a set of scores. Okay, that's all about outliers. Uh, catch you next time, peterblakemass.com. All the best with your studies. Bye-bye.